How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for HabitsUnplugged.com. Today I wanted to talk about 10 things that you don't want to hear about habit change. Alright, so we're going to talk a few about uh, some of the things that you don't want to hear about habit change. You know, th some of the things that people come into habit change and they think that it's um, going to happen overnight. I think that it's going to be easy. Um, so the first thing is that habit change isn't a magic bullet, right? Just because you change one thing in your life, it doesn't mean to say that uh, you're going to change your whole life for the better, right? You know, certainly if you get rid of a bad habit and you replace it with a good habit, then things are going to change positively for you. But as I say, it's not a magic bullet. It's not a panacea that's going to sort out everything else you know i mean most people with normal lives have got a lot of problems you know a lot of problems that are caused by themselves um, most of the problems are caused because of ourselves and our own place within society right because uh, of the places that we grew up with you know the people that we grew up with um, the ideas the thoughts that we grew up with the cultural um manifestations of those ideas and thoughts and practices uh, you know for instance cigarette smoking and alcohol drinking and meat eating and all of these things are sort of habits that we do um, they're cultural habits that we do um, that are harmful to us you know now you know you you take cigarettes for instance and it's one of those things that is declining rapidly you know there's a lot fewer people smoking in the world today than there was 10 years ago and there's going to be a lot fewer people in 10 years smoking than there is now and um, so that's on a good trend a downward trend uh, a destructive trend for the cigarette industry right but at the same time you see the rise in people who are swapping one habit for another right and uh, the swapping cigarette smoking for um, e-cigarettes now there's no guarantee that just because you smoke an e-cigarette that it's any better for you because it's still got chemicals in it and most of these e-cigarettes are made by and um, funded and marketed by cigarette companies right by the old cigarette companies you know these are the people that are have got their hand in that particular pie if you ever see and we are seeing uh, marijuana being legalized then if it's put out and it's able to be sold in any quantities and any manufactured quantities then the people who will be doing this will be either uh, the cigarette companies themselves or the manufacturers anyway different story but what I'm saying is that if you quit drinking cigarette oh, if, if, so what I'm saying is that if you stop smoking cigarettes it's going to be beneficial to your health right it's going to be beneficial to your pocket it's going to be beneficial to um, the people around you but it's not a magic bullet that's going to change everything else right so you've got to understand that one habit change can lead to another habit change i've done this in quitting drinking alcohol um, once i was off the alcohol i started thinking i started feeling good about myself you know and feeling all those positive benefits to not drinking alcohol um, I'm sort of nearly five years off the stuff now but maybe six months into it I started thinking seriously about uh, my nutrition two months into it I was thinking seriously about my health and I was joining uh, I joined yoga classes I started running um, I started doing some stuff to try and increase my physical fitness uh, because at the time I was very unphysically uh, uh, I had a standing of, of bad physicality, <laughs> let's put it like that. Um, but uh, so it's a gradual process, you know, and you have to have patience not only with the habit itself, but with the lifestyle change that you want to bring about because you're trying to change one habit. And just because you change one habit doesn't mean to say that that's it. So that's the first one. Um, number two is that you're still gonna have a lot of work to do in your life in other areas, and I've already touched on this. Um, with me, 
you know, I'm still five years into this fighting um, to keep my weight down. And it's, it's, I eat a lot of food. So the thing that I have changed and the thing that I've concentrated my focus on for the last uh, three or four years is to eliminate as much of the crap as I can, right? Um, so I've eliminated most processed foods. I've eliminated uh, meat and dairy. I'll talk about that in another video, but you know, really for health reasons. And that comes about, that has come about for me purely through education, through reading books and listening to people who I'd grown to respect a lot. Um, and it's still a work in progress because I'm still eating a, a lot of food, you know, and I haven't got past that uh, level of discomfort where, and the mindset where I want to sort of lose the weight and get down. Now, I did get down to um, 193 pounds at one stage, but that was only for about a week, and it was after a juice um, a detox that I'd done for a month, and I got down to a lowest weight of 193, but within uh, two days of the diet, I'd put back on at least seven pounds because, you know, when you're drinking a juice diet, it just flushes your whole system out. You know, you've no solids in here and the food goes through you very quickly. So, and it was really good. I felt healthy after the month, so I, I was glad I did it. But then, you know, you start eating solids again and the solids weigh. So, you know, weight is not a great uh, determinant of health, you know. I mean, you could weigh a lot more, but you could have a lot more um, muscle to uh, fat ratio, you know, you could be a lot more muscular than fat, uh, but still weigh the same as a big bloke, you know, uh, a big, you know, a fat bloke or a fat, fat lady. Um, so know that it's an ongoing process, it's an ongoing journey, um, and the changes that you make will be slow. Um, they will happen over uh, um, a long time. They will. You know, you have to have patience, you have to have persistence, and you've got to keep positive about these things and know that you're going in the right direction, you know. Um, I mean, going in the right direction doesn't mean to say that you have to, uh, you can't change, right, that you can't change the direction, you can't decide, well, this really isn't for me, I've tried this for a long time and it's not working. So, so long as you're moving, generally in, in a positive direction in your life, generally in the same direction, trying to achieve the same results, the means to the end might not be beneficial to you, you know? And that's what it's, it's about, is trying different things and seeing what works for you, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And I've stabilized my, my weight, so I'm not gaining weight anymore, but I am still trying to lose the weight. So, I mean, I can feel the, uh, like I say, I got down to 193 and I'm back up to 100 and, or 220 pounds now. So I would like to be around, hovering around the 200 mark, if not a bit lower um, for, because I, I just felt great when I was that weight, you know. Um, and I know it's going to, I have to dedicate some time to it. I have to dedicate some time to going to the gym and really focusing on losing the weight that way. And um, also, you know, eating foods, which are not so calorifically dense uh, and even though I only eat fruit and vegetables you know it's a lot a lot of the stuff that I do eat is uh, got a lot of high calories in it you know when I'm talking about high calories I'm talking about a banana is 100 um, 100 calories per banana roughly speaking uh, and when you add those together you know seven eight nine ten bananas in a smoothie you're talking about a thousand calories you know so it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of bang but it's healthy bang and that was my whole point. Um, the next one is changing your habits has knock-on effects to other areas of your life, right? To people, to environments, you know. Um, <clears throat> when you first get into relationships with somebody, you are a certain person, right? And some of your habits might not, um, might not seem uh, apparent at the time, you know. I mean, you see this in your partner, you know, some of the, the habits that your partner has might not be, uh, you might not know about them until you move in together, you know, and even then it might take a while for you to discover some of the habits that your partner has got, right? Some of them you might like, some of them you might not like, right? So some of the changes that you make with your partner might be 
uh, welcome and others uh, not so welcome. You know, when I'm talking about the, the not so welcome habits, if you smoke and your partner smokes, then you quitting drinking or quitting smoking uh, might have a negative effect on your partner in sense of that they now see their their own world being a little bit different or threatened. Same thing if you quit drinking, you know, especially I think more so when you're quitting drinking is your partner sees drinking, they don't see your new way of looking at the world, you know. You see drinking as being a bad thing. You want to change it. You want to get alcohol out of your life because you know it's going to make a positive difference in your life. But your partner might still have that old way of thinking where she sees or he sees the uh, alcohol as being a positive, of having a positive effect in their life, you know. And that can be, um, that can cause conflict, can cause anxiety, you know. And it's the same thing with your environment, you know. If you quit smoking in a smoking environment where you have to go into a smoking environment, it's difficult to, to, to do that, you know. It's, um, there's a lot of ways that your environment can still have an impact on you. Uh, the next one is that, um, habit change, changing your habits is going to have an, an effect on your emotions to one degree or another. Um, it's an emotional upheaval time, you know, change causes discomfort and discomfort can cause your emotions to sort of go all over the place. And, you know, there's, there's a lot you can do about it. There's, you can think about this from the perspective of what you control and what you don't control, you know, and from, you know, control is, um, on a spectrum, right? So you've got no control of, over some things in your life, right? You've got no control over whether or not the sun comes up in the morning, right? You've got no control over the weather, right? You've got no control over um, what other people think. What you have got control over is uh, you've got complete control over the way you think. You know, for, for the most part, you've got a lot of control over your thoughts and your decisions and your uh, how you put those thoughts and decisions into action right in between that is you know your emotions um your cravings you know you've no control over the actual craving popping up right and uh, making itself known right so you know you, you can feel hunger for something you didn't think about the hunger you didn't cause it to come up it's just a natural bodily function so if you're trying to lose weight you've got no craving or you've got no control over that craving for the chocolate right but what you do have control over is how you think about the craving what you do about the craving so on and so forth right number five is that habit change is not easy in general right it's simple in that you just don't do what you're trying to change if you want to quit smoking you just don't smoke if you want to quit drinking you just don't um, drink alcohol if you want to lose weight, you just don't eat high fat foods um, that are gonna put on the weight. So you stop eating the four cheese pizzas, right? Uh, it's a bit more complicated losing weight then um, because there's so many different things and you have to check packaging and you've, you know, you have to check the packaging for what the contents of the food is. Um, you know, for me, it's a simple thing with losing weight of trying to eat as many whole foods as you can because with the whole foods you know what's in it right in a potato you know there's a potato in an apple you know there's an apple um, in water you know it's just water you know when you pick up a package of something processed foods you've got to check all the ingredients right and the more ingredients there are the more ingredients you've got to check you know and it's just it's a nightmare and the more packaged the food is the more processed the food is the less nutritional value it's going to have the less nutritional benefit you're going to get from it so just know that you know nothing is going to change in a few days right you know things will change in a few days they will get easier you know the discomfort will will uh, wear off um, things will get easier as you go on but you, you know you're going to have days where uh, which are harder than others you know even though you know today might be uh, easier Tomorrow might be more difficult. Uh, you might have a day next week, which might be more difficult again. You might have a day in a month, which is difficult, depending on how you're seeing things, what's happening in your environment, the people around you, what temptations you're uh, put up against. So in general, habit change is not easy, but it's worthwhile because if you don't change, then you're, it's just more of the same. And it's more of the same stuff that was making you miserable in the first place and wanting to change. So, you know, even though habit change is not easy, it's worthwhile.
Number six is that some of the things that you used to do when you were practicing the old habit will not have the same attraction as um, when you don't practice it anymore. And that includes environments, um, other complementary things that you used to do with the habit. Um, so let's take alcohol. Um, when, you, when I used to drink alcohol, um, I used to uh, eat crap foods with it as well, you know, when I got drunk. So that was one of the things that I, I really, I couldn't really eat the same sort of stuff. Like, I don't know if you know what a doner kebab is. Well, a doner kebab is, it's like meat that is sliced off. Uh, oh, it's just a nasty thing. It's manufactured meat in, um, put into a, like a pit of bread and it's disgusting. It's, nobody wants to eat that kind of crap when they're, when they're sober. Um, and yeah, I mean, what I used to enjoy when I was drunk was that, you know. Uh, some of the people that I used to drink with, um, I could no longer stand to be in their company when I was sober. You know, and these were people that, you know, they weren't really my friends anyway, but even some of my friends, um, you know, the, it, was, it was time to make changes because um, they were going in different directions to what I was going in. And, you know, if you try and keep friendships like that alive when you've got diverging pathways, then, you know, something's going to happen either. You know, there's going to be a, a, a strain in the relationship which is going to cause it to break up anyway, or um, there's a strain in, in, the, in your determination, your persistence to do what you know is right, and, you know, you go back to your old, old way of behaving, you know. Uh, so, you know, everything's not going to remain the same. Some things are just going to you know it's going to have knock-on effects to other areas of your life and it's just something that you you have to deal with there's no point in thinking about this beforehand i'm just making you aware that it's it, it will happen you know and you don't know what's going to happen until it does happen you know if you know what i mean it depends on the on the habit that you're trying to change it depends on on um, what the peripheral behaviors were but you will notice knock-on effects and for the most part i have to say you know those knock-on effects, even though they might cause you discomfort in the moment, they are things which will benefit you in the long run, you know, that are beneficial in terms of moving you forwards towards your goal, you know. It's like, you know, you can tell uh, a lot about a man by, uh, a lot about a person by the four or five closest people in their lives. Uh, you know, if you're trying to get a life where you're moving forwards financially. Uh, you're trying to earn money in your life and you're trying to increase your own wealth. And then it doesn't do to surround yourself with poor people because poor people generally tend to have a poor mentality. You know what I mean? I'm not giving you um, a judgment on that in any way, shape or form, right? I'm just saying that this is it's the same thing if you're trying to lose weight, you know? You don't really want to be hanging around with people who are overweight because they eat the wrong types of foods for you um, if your goal is to lose the weight and keep it off then these people are you know it's not conducive to you keeping the weight off if same thing with smoking same thing with drinking same thing with any habit change right certain things that are going to happen that are going to change and that's going to bring about further discomfort in your life right the seventh thing that i'll talk about here is that your mind is going to try and pull you back to the same old same old to the old familiar that's what habit change is really all about um it's the familiarity the repetition of doing the same thing over and over and over again and that's really what your habit change is going to is trying to do because it's familiarity is safe right if you know when you when we're in the cave, right, uh, you know, we're still wired for that type of mentality, you know, for the prehistoric mentality where you're trying to keep yourself uh, as safe as possible um, as much of the time as possible. And, you know, this is really a comfort zone thing. It's like, um, it's the inner voice telling you that the old way is better, right? That the old way of doing things is better. That there's nothing wrong with the old way of doing things for a start and that the new way of doing things is just going to take you so long to 
um, implement and to put into your life and is it really worth it you know these are all things that your inner golem is going to say to you in order to try and get you to go back to your old way of living because the old way is familiar right i mean just talk about like this is here is a pathway you know it's a pathway that's been uh, worn in over the years um, especially when you get up to the top here there's there's a, a smaller pathway that's just been worn in by people coming by on bicycles on uh, on foot you know walking running and you know that pathway is the safe way to go that's the way the brain thinks it's, it's like everyone follows the same path because they know where the path goes they know where it it ends they know where what's what they're going to see on the way you know i take the same pathway all the time when i'm walking because it means that there's nothing unfamiliar it allows me to concentrate my mind on the things that i want to do when i'm out walking right which is think uh, listen to audiobooks and if i'm following the same pathway if i am uh, if i deviate off and i'm looking around for new areas to go it just it i can't think because i'm seeing new things all the time you know so uh your mind loves familiarity and your mind hates unfamiliarity your mind loves comfort and it hates discomfort right so your mind is always going to try and pull you back to the comfort right so just keep that in mind as you're making a habit change that you know it just makes it a little bit less easy but take it step by step as they say moment by moment and just move forwards bit by bit and you'll find that you'll make a lot of progress you know number eight is that getting rid of one habit is going to uncover other habits that you didn't realize even existed right um, or it's going to uncover other habits that maybe you you thought were not as bad as they were but once you've got rid of the yoke of the old one you know you you're starting to open your eyes to something else now i've talked about this earlier on and the way i view this is in terms of peeling back the layers of an onion right at the beginning you your first habit represents the outer skin of the onion so let's say that you're trying to um, quit smoking and you take back the first layer and you go through the whole thing of quitting smoking and you may be two or three uh, months into this and you realize that you, you've got to do some work on your health now because you know even though you don't smoke anymore you feel the benefits of not smoking you, know, you feel that your breathing is still out of whack um, and you need to do some work on that so that's something that you've got to sort of work on um, quitting drinking alcohol is another thing I mean that was my big um, cornerstone habit change was uh, I peeled back the layers on that I started to um, feel the benefits of not having alcohol in my life anymore you know the money in my pocket the, the renewed health the no more hangovers the being able to think straight all that kind of stuff and then I started to um, work on uh, my physical health you know going out and running and doing the yoga and I've spoken about this earlier on and nutrition came later and you know just I've gone back to school I've done so many other different things that I realized that um, I wanted to change you know and there's other you know they don't have to be a massive big habit change you know the, the ones that you uncover it's not necessarily that you're you're gonna you know uncover you know take take away one habit and you're going to uncover so many different big habits you know a lot of them are small habits you know and they're just like a drinker procrastinates more you know um a smoker tends to um do the same stuff i mean it's it's sort of when you're addicted to a drug for instance even like um smoking i mean how many different little lies did you tell in order to get out for a cigarette you know and there might be small white lies, you know, that don't really hurt anyone in order to sort of go, oh, yeah, I've just got to go and make a really important phone call now just so you can get out and have a cigarette, you know. Or um, with alcohol, you uh, had a dirty, stinking hangover and you woke up late because you've been drinking the night before and you made an excuse and you told a little lie 
to your boss, you know, and, you know, because you were late for work or something like that, you know. And all of these things, I mean, that this type of thing becomes habitual after a while, you know, lying um, about your habits, you know, in order to cover up something that you don't want other people to know about. So, you know, these type of things that you understand about yourself, um, you start getting a better understanding of yourself once you get rid of the habit that has caused the other habits to form if you understand what I mean. Um, number nine is that you might become boring to other people, you know. Uh, if you hang around with smokers, then you might become boring to the, the, the other smokers in your life when you stop smoking, you know. Um, if you drink, you definitely going to become boring to the other drinkers in your life. They're going to look at you and think, well, it used to be so much fun, you know. And there's so many different things. Once you start acting like um, more of an adult and you start pursuing adult things, then you know the the other people in your life that were sort of privy to your old habits are going to look at you in a different way so be it you know i mean don't be held back by that and don't let other people hold you back it's it's a sign of maturity when you can not only move on from your habits but move on from the destructive people in your life and believe me, there are a lot of destructive people in your life that you didn't know were there. And it's only when you get rid of certain bad habits that these people pop up their heads, you know. And number 10 is that you're never going to reach perfection in this, right? You know, no matter how hard you try and how much you try and change yourself, you're never going to get to that perfect state, right? But that's not the point, you know. The point is the journey is it's the same thing. We're all heading to the same destination eventually you know we're all going to get to that same place but it's what you do in the meantime you know you, you hear people saying well you know I drink and I smoke because life is short and you know um, you have to live while you live you know but it's all right saying that when you're young right and the cigarettes and the alcohol and the drugs and the um, high fat foods are not having an effect on your body because your body is able to cope with that but as you get older, your body becomes much, much more sensitive to these things. You know, just think about the food that you're eating when you get older. Your body cannot tolerate that. Um, so you've got that more sensitivity from one point of view. And then from another point of view, you've got the accumulated damage that you've caused over the years. You know, eating one burger is not going to cause you to um, have a heart attack, you know. Uh, smoking one cigarette is not going to give you lung cancer, you know. Um, drinking one glass of whiskey is not going to give you cirrhosis of the liver. But it's the accumulation. So um, when you get older and you start to reap the consequences of that accumulation of those four cheese pizzas, all the four cheese pizzas and burgers that you eat and the fries and all that kind of stuff, all the drinks that you were consuming, the alcoholic drinks, all the cigarettes that you were smoking, once you start to reap the consequences of that, that's when your life starts to um, get really uncomfortable, you know? So you have to compare the discomfort before you quit, before you quit doing anything, before you um, make the changes in your life to the discomfort that you're going to feel afterwards, you know, and compare long-term with short-term, you know, compare... 10 years down the road if you carry on doing the habit and where's that going to take you and how are you going to feel you know it's not just that you get to the end and you drop dead and you go well well you had a heart attack and I dropped dead you know from <laughs> the four cheese pizzas that I was eating it, it doesn't work like that it's it what precedes that heart attack is a long-term uh, illnesses and long-term problems you know hospital visits costs cost in financial terms in terms of your own health and mental health and the uh, mental health of the people that are around you you know you know the people that have to look after you in old age uh, you won't even get to old age you know because of your habits so you know think about that from from that perspective um i think about habit change in the terms of that you know as long as you're heading in the right direction you're getting rid of the bad influences the bad shit in your life the bad habits heading into a good direction then you're on the right road you know and you're never going to get perfection but you know perfection is just it's um it's an ephemeral thing it's not something that 
that is in reality, you know. I mean, as I say, success and failure, they're two um, relative things, you know. You might gain perfection in one small area of your life, but um, in other areas of your life, you, you know, other people are going to be way, way, way better than you. So, you know, it's all relative. So look, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and hope you got something out of it. Uh, if you want to uh, leave a comment, uh, if you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like me to see me doing or podcasts, any questions you'd like to see included in the podcast, uh, let me know. Um, and until next time, remember that persistence is the thing that creates enduring habit change, right? Positivity is the thing that fuels your journey and patience is the thing that keeps you on the road in the long term keeps you going day by day by day by day right? so look until next time i'm kevin o'hara for habitsunplugged.com take care of yourself good luck bye now